Near Columbus University, a young man named Ulysses Kane is running in the woods, looking really scared. He yells for something to stop and falls down. Holding onto a tree, he wonders why it won't stop. Suddenly, a voice calls his name. It's the inhuman Queen Medusa, along with some other inhumans, and friends like the human torch and beast. Ulysses's cousin Triton says, they can help him, and Medusa's sister telling him it's a good thing. It seems like they want to help Ulysses, with something troubling. In Manhattan, Iron Man is among the wreckage, showing signs of discomfort. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, remarks on the chaos, with Iron Man agreeing. Nova assists Miles, and Captain America speaks about the unity of the Avengers, highlighting how they face challenges together. Ms. Marvel asks Iron Man, if their plan will really work. But there's a serious problem, a huge glowing celestial and some floating beings. Iron Man says, they must stick to the plan. Spider-Man is nervous, and asks what the giant thing is, and where it came from. Ms. Marvel tells him it's a giant celestial, that wants to destroy everything. Captain America tells the young heroes to stay focused. Up in the sky, there's a big noise, and Iron Man says, it's a good sign that their plan is working. The new Thor shows up, with a bunch of other heroes, Avengers, Inhumans, X-Men, and more. While they're fighting the Celestial Soldiers, Iron Man talks to Captain Marvel. On the ground, a group of magicians like Doctor Strange and Scarlet which get ready. Captain Marvel tells everyone to step back, and Doctor Strange gives the order for a special spell, called Dimension Reversal. People, both heroes, and regular folks, watch in amazement as the magical plan unfolds. The huge celestial is suddenly gone, and the tired magicians say it's over, and the big problem is fixed. Nova wonders how they knew it would happen. The next evening, a bunch of heroes gather at Stark Tower, for a casual meeting. Tony Stark says, he's wanted to do this for a long time. He's really happy about what happened, and raises a glass to the Inhumans, thanking them for making it happen. Everyone appreciates the Inhuman royal family. She-Hulk joins Carol, and wonders how the Inhumans got the information. They decide to ask to Medusa. They approach a small group, where the Inhumans and their allies are standing. Carol asks Medusa, how they got the information, and Medusa, along with Crystal and the Human Torch, invites them to join the conversation. In the kitchen, Medusa introduces Carol, and Jessica to their new friend Ulysses, who helped them a lot. Ulysses is super impressed by all the heroes. Medusa tells him to be open and share. Ulysses finds it hard to explain, how he can see the future. Tony suggests bringing in Jean Grey for help. Captain America is a bit worried, about the tension between mutants and inhumans, but Tony says it's just a party. Jean Grey comes in, and suggests creating a special connection, so Ulysses can show them his powers without sharing all his thoughts. Ulysses says he doesn't have weird thoughts, Jean tells Ulysses to relax, and share his story while she shows everyone. Ulysses tells everyone that a few weeks ago, he learned he's an inhuman, even though just a few months earlier, he didn't even know what that meant. The Terrigen Mists, which give powers to Inhumans, affected his college in Ohio State. He shares a strange experience of suddenly being alone in the dark, lit up by a spotlight, and calling out. When he comes back to reality with the others, Jean Grey is confused. She says his mind is like a closed system, unable to be read. Spider-Man makes a joke about it being like a MacBook, and Ulysses nervously wonders if that's a bad thing. Captain Marvel asks Ulysses, if he's looking for a job, and wonders if he's only working with the Inhumans. Tony Stark makes fun of the idea, and Carol says her team, the Ultimates, is trying to stop bad things before they happen, and they could use his help. Tony keeps doubting, saying they have someone they don't know, an Inhuman who can predict the future, but has a closed mind, and wonders why that's good enough for her. Captain America asks Tony Stark what he's thinking, but Tony refuses to have a big discussion, about right and wrong, as those usually don't end well. Carol gets annoyed, and wonders if it's now a question of morality. Tony repeats, that they have this inhuman, Ulysses, who can predict possible future events, but they don't really know how his power works. All the heroes focus on Ulysses. Captain Marvel decides, that if everyone is still okay by the end of the day, then what they did was the right thing. Tony Stark asks Ulysses to explain how he got his powers. Ulysses tells them that a few weeks ago, he was a regular person. The Terrigen Mists, which changed people with inhuman DNA, affected him, and he was lucky to gain powers. He initially didn't notice any changes in his appearance. Then suddenly, he started experiencing visions, not just seeing them, but feeling like he was really there. He thought he was going crazy, and that's when the Inhuman royal family helped him. Karnak, one of the Inhumans, had a theory. He told Ulysses, to pay attention to the details in his visions. One day, he saw a vision of the world being destroyed, a real apocalypse. He looked around, noticed the details, and realized it never happened, thanks to all the heroes.
Tony says, that dealing with a big monster attack yesterday was easy, because they stopped it. But what if the next prediction isn't easy, and involves one of them? Tony asks Carol, if they should stop someone, if Ulysses predicts there'll be a problem in the future, even if that person doesn't know, they'll do something wrong. Carol calmly responds, that it depends on the situation. Tony asks, on what? And they exchange serious looks. Carol is frustrated because she thought Tony, being a futurist, would respect and believe in the future. She suggests being careful, about what they do with Ulysses' predictions. Despite that, she's glad everyone is there, and suggests they enjoy the party. Tony leaves. Three weeks later, Ulysses wakes up from a bad vision in New Attilan. Queen Medusa and Johnny Storm hurry to his room, and other Inhumans join them. Ulysses says they have to call the Ultimates. Later, in Tony Stark's lab, he's annoyed and argues with the AI named Friday. Mary Jane interrupts with sad news, Rhodey is gone. Iron Man angrily arrives at the Triskelion, demanding to see Rhodey. Maria Hill leads him to Rhodey's body, but Tony focuses on the shattered armor. He wants to know how it happened. Hill explains that Captain Marvel organized a team, but things went wrong. Tony rushes to find Carol, discovering her at the bedside of the unconscious She-Hulk. He asks if she's alive, and Carol explains she is, but they don't know if she'll wake up or walk again. They need Bruce Banner, a Gamma specialist. Tony asks Carol what happened, and she simply says, Thanos. Tony wonders if Thanos attacked them on Earth, but Hill explains that they ambushed Thanos, when he was attacking a place called Project Pegasus. Tony wants to know, how they knew Thanos would be there, but Hill doesn't answer. Carol shares, that the Inhuman who could see the future told them about it. Tony accuses Carol of being responsible for Rhodey's death, but she defends him, saying he volunteered for the mission, because he was a soldier. Tony is upset about Rhodey predicting this outcome, but Carol stands by their decision, expressing sorrow and stating that Rhodey knew the risks. Tony doesn't want Carol to say Rhodey's name, and interrupts her. Carol confesses her love for him and apologizes. Tony asks about Thanos, and Carol mentions, they have him in a cell below. Tony turns away, and when Black Panther asks where he's going, Tony firmly says, he's going to make sure none of them ever play God again. Carol wants to go after Tony, but She-Hulk stops her. She-Hulk has woken up, and tells Carol to fight for their future, not just Tony's. She collapses as her heart gives out, and medics rush in, asking everyone to leave. Carol is left standing there, shocked, while Iron Man continues flying toward his destination.